Hello, we are aboard the, well, what bus team are we on? What team bus? Q36.5 Pro Cycling Team, our team bus, which was built Purpose built for this team, and yeah, you were pretty impressed when you walked in, I think. I was a little bit. Sibius Monk, that's how you say your surname first, isn't it? Cyrus. Cyrus. Oh. So, right, let's start that one again, Dave. Or Billy, yeah, or Billy Ray Cyrus. Sibius? Yeah, yeah, it's happened a bit in Belgium. Okay. I lived in Belgium for two years. Right, let's start again. And we are with Cyrus Monk. Cyrus Monk, that's correct. We're going to talk a whole heap of stuff including well having the best air in the peloton aren't we yeah I don't, it's up up for debate but i'll put i'll throw my hat in the ring so you i'm guessing do you remember lauren brush had no definitely before oh. my time <laughs> how old are you uh i'm 27. 27 that's it yeah before your time well my idol for the classics was stewie o'grady and i couldn't really emulate his hair well i could have emulated it but it would have just involved getting a razor out so there wasn't too many Australian classics riders with much hair going on, actually. Yeah. Oh, moustaches. Moustaches are in the pellet again, again since, like, the 19, I'm guessing, 40s. Yeah, for sure. I always looked up to Mitch Docker, and uh, he's the king of the moustache in the classics as well, more recently. The power of the facial hair. Yeah, I don't know how much power it gives me, but I've tried to add that into the, the mullet with the combo there. All right, if you don't know who this gentleman is, well, I'm sure you do, though. Go check out his um, Instagram channel because you're a bit of a musical genius apart from being all right on the bike, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I got stuck uh, in hotel quarantine in Australia and didn't have much else to do with my time, so I spent a while making some little music videos and it was more just for me and to, to keep some people entertained and then turns out that quite a few people liked it, so I was a bit surprised by that and then just decided to keep doing them. I always was into my music and into making music, so I like having a bit of fun with it. Cycling is obviously my profession and there's enough high stakes, high pressure stuff there, so the music side of things, I like to keep that pretty fun and lighthearted. Does, is that the, like an outlet for when you sat around days on end in Belgium, you've done your training, you've had your massage, you've been bandaged up? Uh, is it a bit of an outlet just to turn your brain off? Yeah, something different. I don't use it so much when I'm at races, actually. I probably could, but I don't think my roommate would be a big fan. If I got out a harmonica or a tin whistle or something and was uh, making music in the room, it would be a bit different. I definitely do it when I'm at home in between races, just pick up a guitar, pick up whatever I have lying around the house and start playing around with it. But here, I definitely like having my outlets, but I don't use music. So I definitely listen to music, but I don't. I don't make that much music stuff while I'm away at races. It's definitely something I could actually do a bit more of, but then I'd probably need my own hotel room. So I'm guessing you don't even have control over the CD player or uh, <laughs> radio on the bus. No, nah, the sports directors in our team take control over that. The, we've got two Dutch sport directors for the classics <sighs> and they, they love their uh, Dutch pretty hard style dance music and uh, that gets us going but before the race I don't mind a bit of that to get you going anyway. Getting into it are you? Yeah we uh we just do whatever we can to get going before the races and uh if you have that playing as loud as the sports directors like it playing then there's no way not to get fired up before a race. Now I wanted to talk to you for a couple of reasons one of them is because as you say you're 27 years old and it's really your first yes last year was your first year as a professional professional you've had trainee stints with yeah, EF yeah. And Cannondale back in the past but it's taken a, a, quite a while to it hit the world tour hasn't it yeah definitely I I never uh I, didn't, I can't say I never thought I'd be doing these races but there's definitely a long period where I didn't expect to be doing these races because I was really lucky fortunate to get a stagiaire stagiaire with EF uh in 2017 and 2018 so a long time ago now and yeah that didn't work out to go to that team initially and then for me personally I was thinking everything at that point was about getting a world tour or a pro contract uh, as much for the riding and then also because I was struggling to survive to make ends meet racing over here and then going back home and, and working. Are oh, you uh, working back in Australia? Right? Yeah, I just had to always work during the, the summer in Australia, so winter here, um, to save up to come back over. And then after, yeah, one, two, three years of that, I 
I, I can't say I'd given up, but I, to me, I was just riding a bike because I liked riding a bike. Yeah. I loved racing a bike. I loved racing in Belgium, doing the Kermis races, doing some lower level races here. But it wasn't, I have to get back to the pros. I have to be on a, a contract where I'm getting paid to ride. It was more just, I like riding. And then... You're doing it for the lifestyle because yeah, of the passion. Yeah, passion. And just, I loved, loved racing, loved being in Europe. And then, yeah, I was making no money whatsoever out of it. I was still working in Australia whenever I was back. But I just thought, well, I'll do this as long as I can um, because I love it. And then I can worry about making money later in life. And then, yeah, because I think I had that really no pressure on me at that point because I'd almost stopped. Not not everything was about getting a contract or or getting money from it. Then I was racing really well and getting good results, winning some races, and then... Yeah, Doug noticed that when he was starting up this team um, and he was, uh, yeah, prepared to take a chance on me as someone that certainly wasn't young to be coming into the pro ranks. And, yeah, now I'm just so happy that I'm doing the same as I was before in terms of just riding my bike. So I love riding my bike, but now I'm actually making a living out of it and also getting to race such cool races here. I can't tell you how much that... Um... Makes me happy, right? Because you, you look at the pro peloton today and there is young guns coming through, 18-year-olds turning pro for world or juniors getting contracts. Yeah. Like, hopeful, like, the team's coming to them. There's a... Because it's a completely changed scene, hasn't it? Like, from yeah, when you definitely. first started. Yeah, I felt like... I remember when I was doing the stagiaire, even the second year, because I got to know a lot of the riders on the EF team and, like, Sebastian Langeveld, who's some, he's now a director there, but he's someone that's always excelled in these. And at the time, I was 21, and I was doing some of the the autumn classics in Belgium, so not quite the same level as we're at here, but performing pretty well. And he said, oh, how's it going? Do you have a contract? And I said, no, I'm still waiting. I haven't heard anything. And he said, oh, don't worry. You're still young. You're 21. Whereas now 21 just doesn't seem young at all. Like, guys that I'm, I'm mentoring or coaching – when they're 21, they feel like they're past it and they're not going to make it if they're not pro by then. So it is crazy. But then at the same time, I think it's similar to other sports uh, like football, soccer, as we say in Australia, they're going pro at 18, 19. Like uh, in Australia, the team sports, cricket, Australian football, it's again like 18, 19, you're playing at the top level then. So it is following other sports. I think the sacrifices you have to make to be good in cycling, it's crazy to expect that of 17 18 year olds but i don't know if it'll change back to the way it used to be in the past i think that's just the future of cycling now because you would have made a hell of a lot of sacrifices over well, how long have you been like your yeah the first year i came to belgium was 2016 so this is now my ninth year um it's a lot of sac- that's a lot, yeah, of, yeah. lot of years lip- it's sleeping just a lot of time away things. from friends and family yeah and then had some absolutely uh rubbish accommodation situations here in belgium and it's funny people always ask me for advice and they expect that it's going to be coming over here is going to be this yeah how old are you moment of ah oh, this is so cool but actually it's not very glamorous a lot of the time racing here but no for sure the uh the sacrifices to be able to race at this level are it's yeah it's not really just a sport it's a lifestyle like you just you you can't choose to do the same things that other sports people get to do with their friends and family you don't get the the time with uh your loved ones that other sports get but there's a lot of other perks and nice watches (laughs) nice nice watches nice buses uh and honestly yeah if if I'm if my job involves riding my bike for four or five hours a day, most of the time in reasonable weather, like most people are pretty envious of that. So I don't we none of us you get a lot of complaining in pro bike teams, but I don't think we really have a lot to complain about. It's a pretty good life that we live. What's it like finally sort of rocking up to like yesterday, E three, tomorrow, Gent Weathergun? What's it finally like rocking up to races that obviously you've been striving for year after year after year to get on the start line for? Yeah, honestly, it's pretty crazy when the bus rolls in two hours before the race and they're already three or four deep. The crowd's just there to look at riders stepping on and off a bus. Like, and that's before we even get out onto the course. Uh, the reason I loved coming to Belgium was because it is such a big part of the culture here, cycling. So even when I was racing amateur comices in my first year here, there's big crowds for those. 
big crowds compared to Australia anyway. And I just thought, oh, this is the coolest thing ever. And then this is a whole other level. And then, yeah, for me, it's just so exciting to be actually involved in these races. Obviously, yesterday I had the downside of that crashing 10Ks in, but also that's part of these races. And also it's, yeah, uh, it seems like it happens to even the, the best riders in, in all of these. So, yeah. You, yeah, you get the ups and the downs, but that is part of sport and that's definitely part of racing the classics. You must have a bit of a, a bit of a following. Do you have a bit of a fan club then for spending so many years coming to Europe? Uh, it's funny in Belgium... The the Belgian guys on the team uh, always joke with me because they say more people here are uh, yeah picking out me on the side of the road or cheering <laughs> for me than them. But it's just working with a lot of different teams um, while I've been here, just making a lot of contacts because that was the only way I could get by here is making contacts because I didn't have I couldn't pay for when my bike was stuffed, I couldn't pay to go to a shop and pay top dollar to get it fixed. I had to kind of know a mechanic who knew someone else who could get a part cheaper and then get some contacts through that. Um, always being friendly to people gets you a long way, especially when you're on the other side of the world to where you grew up. So that side of things just means that it's really nice that I just see some friendly faces whenever I show up to a race here in Belgium. And as now I'm not living here, I'm living in Nice in France, but it still, it still feels like a bit of a second home here when I'm around and, and seeing uh, a lot of people that help me get to where I am now. I'm guessing it's a little bit warmer down there. Yeah, definitely warmer, some hills for training. Also for us, we have a pretty extensive race calendar and, this time of year, I'm racing all the time here, but the rest of the year, I'm sort of racing all over Europe. So it's really easy to be based there. It's kind of central to everywhere, good airport there to get to everywhere. And um, yeah, for me, the the training there is really nice. And honestly, for as for whatever people say about the French, the people in Nice are pretty nice people. So I'm pretty happy there. Uh, I, I can't complain about the French. I'm uh... My partner's one. So, yeah, you should, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you'll be upset if I don't say anything. But um, come on, let's have a couple of tips because obviously there'll be youthful kids out there who are yep. doing the hard graft, maybe getting a little bit, not down, but like wondering, will I ever make it? Will I ever make it? What, what are sort of the tips of like just being, getting getting your fingernails dirty, getting in there, getting, yeah. continuing, it's doing funny. a, doing a, it used to be doing a Lou Dol Dirksen. I don't. You probably don't remember him either. <laughs> Turned professional at thirty. Yeah. Now we can go. call it doing a monk. Yeah. Turning professional at twenty six. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a question I get really often because I do coach a few youngsters, a few juniors. And so you, you coach and race at the same time. Yeah. Well, that's how I was getting by as well uh, while I was over here. Is that's when I started coaching. Is I needed a way that I could be riding my bike and uh because i was never getting paid to ride until i joined this team i needed a way that i could still be chipping away like i could work in australia it was always hard with visas to work here so i'd do a bit of coaching remotely um people in australia a few people in the us a few in europe as well but yeah the juniors the most common question is always cyrus do you think i have what it takes to be a pro and then it's a tricky one because at 15 16 17 if I ever asked that, I wouldn't have expected someone to say yes because I was Aye. I was pretty useless in races at that age. I wasn't I wasn't even riding that much. I was still playing other sports. Uh, I never thought I would be a pro at that age. Um, but I think the my answer is always that can for sure be the goal. But if that's your only focus, you're going to be so often disheartened and demoralized because it can seem so far away at so many points so instead my biggest thing and my biggest coaching philosophy and with anything i think is you have to enjoy it so if you can find whichever way you can to make cycling and particularly racing enjoyable then you can get the most from yourself if you're doing that you can't uh you can't be the best version of yourself if you don't love what you're doing that's with anything i think so with cycling, for sure, you have to find a way that you're loving it. So if if the whoever's coaching you or whatever sessions you're doing, you're definitely going to have days you don't enjoy it. So you, that that's all part of it. But the overall thing has to be, no, I really liked, yeah, maybe that session in the rain and I was feeling not that great, but I got home after having it done and I felt really good about myself and that's that was really good. And then you have to be someone that's excited to going to races 
uh, for the most part, because if you're not enjoying something, then you just won't be able to get uh, the best from yourself. And then also in terms of working towards any long-term goal, it's more about the systems in place to get to that goal rather than you can have that goal in your head for sure as a motivator, but basically you just need to be putting those systems in place of, and it's, I, this is another thing that I say to everyone, but the best guys aren't doing anything different. It's still just good training, good diet, good recovery, those three things uh, above all else, and then a good headspace. So it it's annoying because there's no magic board or quick fix or anything, and that's what everyone wants, but really that's the only way that you can get there. And then, yeah, mentally I feel like I am stronger than a lot of others in terms of I can take a beating plenty of times and still uh, come back and be excited for the next race, whereas a lot of others don't feel the same way. So that side of things, a bit of resilience and a bit of grit gets you a long way as well. But I don't know how much of that is teachable and how much of that is just getting out there and, and doing it. Well, you've just done yourself a disservice there. You've just given away them <laughs> top tips. So there they are. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a few... Uh... People who would have come to you for paying yeah, you good well they, money. Yeah, they still can, and then <laughs> we, we can work work through all of that in a bit more depth. <laughs> awesome, getting with them tomorrow, of course. Yep, excited for that. Yeah, even definitely though you're excited. a bit beat up. No, um, yeah, just really hoping I can recover pretty well. The wounds aren't too bad; could be much worse. Uh, and then hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can have a good day tomorrow. The classic team's actually been performing really well. We've luck's gone both ways we've had a, a good win from being in front of a lot of crashes and then we've been involved in a fair few but that's always the case in these classics so yeah hopefully we can tomorrow again just put ourselves in a situation where luck's on our side and uh get some riders in the front for the the final selections there in the echelons and take a good result Awesome. Thank you ever so much for your time. Good luck for not just tomorrow, but rest of the season, mate. Yep. Hopefully we can catch up somewhere along the line. In fact, I tell you what, tomorrow, because you're a tea drinker, I'll pop down the old supermarket, posh supermarket, and yeah, get, right. get you a couple of good teas. Nice. Sounds good. I'd shake Beautiful. your hand, but I don't know where. Nah, yeah. it should be all right. Take it easy, mate. Thank Beautiful. you very Thank much. You. Cheers, there mate. we are. Thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, shoot us a message. Or if you're watching it on YouTube, in the comments below. I'll flash your socials up. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, perfect. There we are. Follow this gentleman. If not, just for some more top tips for some decent music. Okay, thank you for watching. Enjoy your riding. And what's a goodbye in Flemish? Uh, goodbye. Salutes. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao.